Hey guys, Josh from Cardfight Empire back again with the second segment of the How to Play Vanguard series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about zones of the game. So basically the whole, um, the field of Vanguard and how things work. Um, so you're going to have zones for everything in the game where you and your opponent put your cards while you're playing each other. Um, all the information of the zones are public, um, except for if they are the G zone face down and the deck, basically. So any other zone, if you ask your opponent to see it um, of their zone, they should show it to you. Um, so basically you have, let me move my camera. So this is the whole field that they give you in the trial deck. You have your deck zone right here. So your deck zone is where you put your main deck um, at the beginning of the game. Uh, cards in the zone are face down. Um, it's a hidden zone, which means that if your opponent asks you to see your deck, <laughs> you can tell them no, because that's not allowed. Um, so basically it is unknown to both players unless you search your deck, which means that you are getting a card from your deck. You're allowed to look at your deck when you're searching your deck. Um, and you also, uh, no player can see the, um, the card order of this deck because order of cards is very important in this game. Um, and you also cannot change the order of the deck without reason. Um, and the reason being a game rule. So you must always shuffle your deck um, at the beginning of the game and after each time that it is looked at, basically. Um, moving to the G zone. The G zone is over here. So the G zone is where you put your G deck at the beginning of the game, always face down. Um, the G zone is a hidden zone for your opponent, but open information to you. So you may pick it up and look at it at any time and change the order. Um, the order in the G zone doesn't matter because when you go look for a card to play from the G zone, you just play it at your leisure from any of the 16 cards that are in your G zone. Um, so the face up cards, like after you've used them, you will flip it over and it will go in a different zone, a face up G zone. So this is the face up G zone. This is the face down G zone. So after you use a card, um, make sure you turn it flip face up. And then the face up G zone is open information to your opponent. So your your opponent is allowed to be like, can I see the G uh, the G units that you have used this game? And you can show them, but they're not allowed to see what you have left, basically. Um, you have your hand. So uh, I'll get into this when I start the beginning, how to like start off uh, a Vanguard match. But your hand at the very beginning of the game is five cards that you draw. This is a terrible hand, by the way. But um, your hand is basically where you hold the cards that you draw um, and that you hold during the game. The hand is a hidden zone for your opponent, meaning that they cannot know the cards in your hand. Um, and only the owner of their own hand can see the cards in it. Uh, you can change the order of the cards in your hand freely um, and always keep the cards hidden uh, in your hand so that your opponent cannot see them except the amount. Um, so your opponent can ask you how many cards in your hand. You can tell them five, but they don't they can't know exactly what cards they are. Um, moving on to the drop zone. The drop zone is located underneath the deck zone. Uh, the drop zone is where your cards go after they've been used. Um, so after they've been retired or discarded, retired is the term in this game for when your card has been destroyed. Um, discarded is when a card goes from your hand to your drop zone. Um, and your whole drop zone is face up and a public, uh, a public zone, meaning that your opponent and yourself can check this at any time. Um, and you may also change the order of cards in your drop zone. And when you put a card into your drop zone, you just put it on top of the already existing ones. But I guess that doesn't matter because you can change the order of them. Um, this is the main field. So this is where you put your units. You have the Vanguard circle here, which is where your main unit goes. And then these three 
uh, or these five, sorry, um, green rear guard circles are uh, called rear guard circles. Uh, they have the R. So this has a V. These five have R's. So Vanguard Circle is like kind of like the leader of your army. Um, Vanguard stands for one who leads. So that will be the unit that is representing you in the battle, I guess you will call it. Um, and then your rear guards will be your soldiers of your army. Um, and so you have five rear guard circles where you can play units that will support you in beating your opponent. Um, so when you have a circle, um, you have seven circles in the game. You have one vanguard circle, five rear guard circles, and one guardian circle right here. Um, guardian circle is where you'll put cards when you guard. Um, and then I went over vanguard and rear guard circles, and we'll go deeper into that later. So, another thing is when you have, um, your vanguard circle here, as you move up in stage, you'll place cards on top of each other. Um, as you go up to the next phase um, in Vanguard. So the cards underneath your Vanguard, there will be cards that are stuck, uh, so to speak, underneath your Vanguard. And that is called, anything underneath your Vanguard is called your soul. So your soul, um, depending on what deck you're using, can be used to pay cost or um, some decks work around calling cards out from the soul. So let's say that uh, there's a deck called Pale Moon. You can use it to call out a card from your soul to your rear guard circle. And everything that fights for you comes from the soul. Um, other clans, they're just mainly used for costs. And um, otherwise, unless it's used, it's stuck there for the rest of the game. Um, your damage, though, is right here. Um, basically, when your opponent attacks you and you take a damage, you'll move a card from the top of your deck over to your damage zone, and you will have one damage, or depending on how much damage you were supposed to take, um, you take, you move cards from the top of your deck over. So let's say, let's say you're supposed to take two damage, boom, boom, took two damage. Um, in your damage zone, when you reach six, um, six cards in your damage zone, you lose the game. Um, that's why your damage zone is important. Your bind zone is not actually on this map, but it'll usually go, like, maybe above your deck zone. So this is my custom map underneath this, and when I use bind zone, I usually just put it right here. Bind zone's not really specified, so you can put it anywhere you want, but, um, is, bind zone is where you put cards that have been bound by a card's effect or a card, uh, or a card's cost. So, um, bind zone is always, uh, it can be face up or face down, um, but is always a public zone. So opponents can, you know, see the bound cards. Um, your trigger zone, no one really uses this zone, so to speak. Hey guys, sorry I cut the clip because my camera died, but um, finishing up the zones of the How to Play Vanguard tutorial. So this zone that I was saying that no one really uses is uh, the trigger check zone. So when you actually attack with your Vanguard, you perform what's called a trigger check, and you take the top uh, card of your deck and you place it face up in the trigger zone, and if it has a present box, you perform an effect, uh, and that's where those are useful at. And after that, the card goes to your hand. So the reason why I said no one really uses the trigger zone is because when people do it, they usually just show it to their opponent while it's still in their hand and then add it to their hand. So no one really uh, uses the trigger, zag, uh, trigger check zone as a zone, but um, that's just a zone for you guys to know uh, if it is there uh, or not. And then the last zone is the exclusion zone. So. What the um, exclusion zone is, is basically a remove from play from the game zone. So there are effects that will cause you to remove cards from your deck completely from the game so you can never use them again in that game. And you just put them like outside of your mat or something like that. There's no exact zone for it. But as long as it's not on the field anymore um, and it's out of the way of the game, um, you can just put it there. Uh, I've seen people 
put the cards to the side of their deck. Um, I've seen them put it off their play mat or whatever, but the exclusion zone is an open zone, guys. So um, if your opponent asks you to see cards that you have removed from the game, uh, then you are both allowed to see it. Um, final details that I would like to mention is when you are revealing, looking for, or searching cards in a zone, uh, those cards don't leave that zone until an action is performed. So basically, if you are searching a card uh, that you are going to add uh, to your hand from your deck, um, the card is not considered added to your hand until the search is done. Um, while you're shuffling, um, if the cards would be... Uh, if you drop your cards while you're shuffling or anything, your opponent sees them, you just put them back and you keep shuffling. Um, shuffle again if you haven't. Um, basically, uh, also, if multiple units uh, are in the same circle, um, so basically there are rows and columns on the field. Rows are across, Columns are vertical. So columns are vertical, uh, rows are horizontal. That's important for some effects because there's some effects that say you can only do this skill in the same row or in the same column, etc. etc. So uh, moving on to how to actually start the game. So you'll have a grade zero. Uh, I'll pull the map that they give us back out because this will be complicated for people who can't imagine the circles. Alright. Move this back a little bit. Awesome. So you have your G uh, deck like we said before. Goes over there in the G zone. You have your deck goes in the deck zone over here uh, then at the very beginning of the game you take your deck and you look through it for a grade zero that you want to be your starter now your starter will usually be a grade zero that you run that doesn't have a trigger box um, one that's a normal unit and has an effect that is useful to you so in this shadow pile and draw deck the starter is drag prince root um, so that's known as your first vanguard uh, when you place a card uh, on the vanguard circle. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you place it face down so that your opponent doesn't really know what you're playing. And then when you guys, after you guys are done with all the procedures to start the game, you guys actually start the game and you flip it face up. Um, which is known as the moment where most people say stand up vanguard. Um, so basically you shuffle your deck. Uh, like I am doing now, it's kind of hard to shuffle without sleeves. Um, then you place it back in your deck zone. Then you will draw cards. You will draw five cards, to be exact. And then you are allowed to mulligan one time, which means you are able to put back however many cards you don't want and draw that same amount until you have five again. So in Vanguard, it is beneficial to you to have grades one, two, and three in your hand so that you can go to the stages, the next stages accordingly in the game, so these grade uh, zeros. Also, you wanna have these present box triggers in your deck, uh, because that's where their effects are most used. So, um, in, if I ever drew this hand while I was actually playing, I would keep this as is the ace card of the deck, um, and it is grade three, and I would shuffle And then I would draw four more cards. This is the same hand because it was really hard to shuffle. But uh, basically, usually if you shuffle well, you'll get a one, two, and three. Won't be a problem. Um, this deck is also in order from being in the trial deck, so it's kind of a bad example. But an ideal hand would be something along the lines of this. Lord, let's get a random grid two. Another grade two, a grade one, and another grade one. So this would be 
um, an ideal okay hand. Um, so then you use a random method to decide who will take the first turn. Uh, you can use rock, paper, scissors, you can use a coin toss, heads or tails, you can roll dice um, and declare who gets highest will go first. Um, so whoever goes first cannot attack, um, just like Yu-Gi-Oh, if you've ever played Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, when you draw the five cards from the top of your deck, those will be your hand, and then uh, you mulligan, like I said, and then when both players are ready, then you flip over and you begin the game. So this is the state that we're at in the game. You have your hand, you have your starter, you have your G-Zone, you have your deck, boom. And then you're ready to play the game. Um, and then that'll, that'll be it for this video. Um, tomorrow we'll be talking about turn phases of a turn and how you go through actually per performing your turn. Um, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, comment if you guys have any questions to ask me, and that will be it for this video segment. Alright, catch you later guys, bye.